in my herd, for instance, I have four bucks. And if I want any of their offspring, goat lovers there are going to be some changes coming to those of us who register our goats through ADGA so if you're unaware of these changes stick around so very recently there uh, the board passed a new rule for the ADGA um, registry that for any sire to have registered bucklings they have to be DNA typed so what is DNA typing? It is literally a permanent record of DNA on file for an animal. What would the point of this be? You know, what is the, what is the purpose of that and why would they pass something like that to be mandatory? Um, so there's, there's a lot of reasons and ADGA, you know, as far as what the benefits to DNA typing are, um, they state, you know, obviously the integrity of the registry, making sure that every animal registered is actually coming from this sire, um, because it's not going to be mandatory for the does, it's just going to be the sires. Um, and, and as far as integrity is concerned, you know, like making sure people aren't just lying. What if you have this really exceptional buck, but you just put on the papers that that buck was in this kid's lines you just sold for a lot of money? It doesn't just mess up. Um, the genetics of the kids that that herd is throwing, it really can mess up a long list of pedigrees and, and whatnot that are on file. So integrity of the herd, obviously, integrity of those registering their animals and saying this animal literally is from these animals. Uh, another benefit ADGA states on their site for, for DNA typing would be if you had a, an accidental breakout. So if you don't know which buck is actually um, bred to your animals, well, this DNA typing, you could absolutely know for sure. Um, and, and believe it or not, if you haven't heard, does can even um, be impregnated and have two different baby daddies um, born in the same kidding. So it's, it's a really good way to, if those things happen, which if you have farms, you know, we've been very fortunate. But it can happen where you're breeding a buck to a certain doe and then there's a breakout and the buck gets in. Well, you're not going to know who the, who the sire is at that point. So that's also a perk to the DNA testing. If one of your goats gets stolen or anything and you had that DNA on file, um, you, could, you could prove that, hey, that is my buck and they stole my buck. Or that is my doe, they stole my doe, whatever the case may be. So that's um, another benefit that they state. So what exactly does that mean for us who are breeding animals and, and registering our goats through ADGA? It means our bucks, we have to send a sample in and our bucks are going to have to be DNA tested on file with ADGA. Now ADGA already does a random DNA typing um, every year. So from January through August, every 75th buck registered, um, they are chosen for, you know, hey, send in your sample of that buck. So you can send in just the sample of the buck, or if you want, you can take advantage of it and send the, the buck plus the um, dam and sire, or just the dam, just the sire, whichever you prefer, and that cost is um, on ADGA. They will pay for that cost, you just pay for the postage. So as I said, that's something that they've been doing anyway. They've also made it mandatory um, that any straws or any, any buck that has been collected, in other words, if you collect their sperm and sell them for AI breedings, they have to be DNA tested and on file to prove. It's a lot harder to say, hey, this is a buck and a straw than looking at the buck and leasing your buck out, obviously. Um, so just, just for, again, integrity purposes, accountability, that has been um, in effect for, for a while now. So how do you DNA type your buck? 
um, well it's, it's actually a pretty simple process uh, you know of course ADGA has all the paperwork that you would you would tell them you're wanting to do this and then you fill out their paperwork they have a specific lab that they use um, and then you pull hairs um, you can you can do it in three ways you can do that from their sperm could be DNA typed their blood they could be DNA typed but hairs with the root of the hair um, obviously has a lot longer shelf life so that is the preferred method and you can some people even keep little envelopes on file with the um, their animals hair in case you know something happens to your animal and sometime down the line you're needing to prove or or verify any DNA so there's specific spots on the animal, their withers, their rump, the back of their legs, that the hair follicles are a lot thicker, um, which means they would have a bigger root. So there's recommended areas to get these hairs from, and they're looking for around 30 hairs with the roots that you would just take a needle nose pliers and, and pluck the hairs. Um, you put it in an envelope, you seal it up, and then you send it off for DNA testing. Now the lab is going to charge $40. If you wanted to do DNA testing um, yourself through this lab, they would be happy to do it for you, um, but it's going to cost $40 per animal. Um, ADGA, when you do it through them, it costs $30 per animal and ADGA will, will foot the extra $10. So it is a little more cost effective if you do it through ADGA. If you do go through ADGA, obviously that would be the purpose of having it on their records. So for, you know, the registered database, obviously, all of the animals. Um, and if you did do it through them, they own the records. Um, you know, so for 30 bucks, they're going to own the records. They will let you know what the results are. But those records are officially theirs. Um, kind of like if you go get your blood work done or something like that at the hospital, They'll give you, you know, what the results were, but those records are, are theirs. You know, you could get them at any time, but they're not going to delete them from their files by any means, and they do own them. Now, it's kind of a very hot topic right now amongst ADGA breeders, people who, who breed their animals and register through ADGA. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of negative comments on, like, the Facebook forums, the goat forums. A lot of people seem to be just not pleased with this with this decisioning um, so some people are saying that they just don't feel they have to prove it uh, you know as far as integrity is concerned a lot of people feel like this is another cost um, and to raising a, a goat herd obviously that has a lot of costs um, and you know the, the whole purpose for improving, improving your breed you know improving your herd it, it does get very costly <laughs> um, you know people that do the linear linear appraisals um, it's a, it's it's expensive the people who DHIR they're they're heard you know you have to pay for the milk testing you have to pay a tester to come out and and watch you you have to send in your samples and have it tested at the lab um, you know so there's a lot of cost there and you know people who show their goats there's a lot of cost there registering your animals there's cost there there's cost everywhere um, and none of that includes raising your herd and just health management which is and feeding uh, which also is very very expensive so some people get a bad feeling of it because of that um, you know which in my herd for instance I have four bucks and if I want any of their offspring starting 2000, uh, January of 2023, if I want any of their buckling offspring to be registered, then my herd has to be DNA typed on file with ADGA. So with the four bucks, that's $120. Uh, it's a one-time cost. It's not something you have to continually do every year. It's on file. It's on record. It's done. So just to put that in perspective. So for the most part, people seem to be very upset of the additional cost um, as well as just having to prove their integrity. Nobody likes to be told you have to do something to prove you're not a liar, um, you know, which is not the intent, obviously, of ADGA um, per se. You know, uh, the whole point of a registry, obviously, is to have those lines and to be able to look at a pedigree, know you're getting the animal from that, 
line from those lines of the animal that's on paper. So it's hard to improve a herd if there's a mistake somewhere along the way, um, you know, genetically or just anything like that can really mess up a long line of animals. Uh, so as far as you know, people being upset, that seems to be on the forums their, their main concerns. And on the other end of it, uh, the people who seems to be in favor of it, a lot of their main concern is they're, they're in favor of it because they are excited that, yay, now everybody's going to have to be accountable for the actual buck that they say they're breeding. You know, these are the lines that they come from. Um, so, you know, it, it just it goes two ways. Uh, I wish there was like a poll so I could see because you, you never really know. Is it just people being very angry? Only they're expressing it for the most part, and the people who aren't upset about it just really aren't sharing their opinion. Um, but again, on the on the goat forums, it seems it seems like there's a lot of angry, frustrated people. People saying they are no longer going to register their goats. They're going to get out of registering completely because of the extra cost, um, and just just being downright mad and upset about this this change. So we're going to have to see what happens. Another thing people were saying too um, that I just remembered, you know, they're 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 kind of upset, like, oh, well, this is just the first step. It's the bucks now. It's going to be the does later. Every animal in our herd eventually is going to have to be DNA typed. Well, the reason for the bucks, I don't I don't know that to be true, but the reason for the bucks is a buck is going to throw a lot of kids in its lifetime, a lot. Um, so to be able to to look back and see you know, who sired each kid, obviously, in DNA typing, it it's a lot different than, say, a doe that might only have 10 kids or less in her lifetime compared to a buck, a good buck, that could throw hundreds of kids in his lifetime. So there's a lot more animals per buck being born than there is per doe, obviously. So I had been looking on the ADGA website because of this information I got off of Facebook forums. Um, I was looking on the website and nothing officially has been posted there yet about this in regards to this whole situation. Um, so probably in the newsletter, end of your newsletter, I'm sure, I'm sure it will be announced by then. But I did reach out to Betty Henning, who is um, vice president in, in the ADGA, um, also the president in our goat group, very, love the woman, um, very knowledgeable. Anyway, I did reach out to Betty, um, just saying, because I wanted to know the facts, of course, and not just hearsay, um, but yes, so officially, Betty says it is going to um, take effect January of 2023. So, if you're going to be selling any registered stock, uh, registered bucklings, starting January of 2023, you know, you're going to have to get your bucks um, DNA typed, so just so you guys are very aware of that. So for those of you who are unaware of the situation, um, as, as far as any changes, you know, obviously that's going to affect all of us. Um, it's, it's something we're all going to have to do if we, if we plan to have any bucklings that we sell as registered stock. So the bucks we have in our herds, they're going to have to be DNA typed, so obviously that's something we're going to do. Um, it's not something I was necessarily ever against. Um, for those, a lot of herds have always done it anyway, just always DNA type their bucks um, to have on file. So, and now, you know, making it mandatory. I know it does give a lot of people a bad taste in their mouth. So again, it's going to be interesting to see how, how this goes if, if people actually do um, drop out of ADGA and start just going with AGS. But um, obviously I'm, I'm sticking with ADGA. It, it's a change and things change all the time. So, and I, I don't necessarily, uh, you know, I, I would never myself be dishonest about a buck that would be bred if there was a breakout or if there was something like that or even an accident and you, you were unaware of it happened, you weren't home to see it, the DNA typing is going to be able to cut through that and make sure that each, each sire is from who the sire that they're saying is from. So I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Um, and again, it's it's a one-time cost for, for our four bucks. If we plan to retain another buck, of course, we'll have to throw that $30 in as well. But, you know, um, kind of kind of is what it is, really. It's not something I'm, I'm too upset with myself. 
I do understand where other people are coming from, that they're upset. Um, so I'm just curious and, and want to hear from you guys also. What is your outtake on it? Uh, is it something you were unaware of and now you're like, oh, okay, or were you aware of it? What is your feelings on it? Do you agree with it or do you disagree with it? Um, so just, just curious to hear what your guys' take on that is. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again soon. Hello, goat lovers. This is Crystal with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. What started with four chickens and two goats quickly grew into a lifestyle. So we moved, got more land, and of course, more goats. Follow our adventures as we grow our herd, our food, and our family.